In this video, we will explain what jQuery is, we will add custom JavaScript, and we will have interactable elements, we'll have a start of a search feature. We explain a lot of important concepts here, so make sure you stick around to the end. Let's get started. So we left off with our complete home page, basically. It's very simple, you can add whatever you want to it. If you're wondering, this is my theme that I'm using by the way, because some of you asked for it. Okay, so, what are we missing? We're missing interaction. Now, if we go to the table thing, what does interaction mean in, in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? In web development, what is it? How is interaction done? Well, if we hover over this, technically that is interactive, it is reactive in a way. It's responding to an event when we hover over it. That is a CSS event, a hover event, but that is not JavaScript which is doing. It's, JavaScript can do the same thing, but it's not JavaScript. JavaScript would be changing things, so if we clicked on here, let me show you a, an explicit example. So if we type um, dollar sign, jQuery selector, brackets, body, and then dot hide. We'll show this later. Now we've hidden the body, and if we type show, now we show the body. It seems we're using the slim version, which limits a few features, but that is okay for now. So, how do we render commands? We want to render the commands here. How do we do that? So, we're going to use a bit of JavaScript soon for sorting the categories, but for now let's just render them like we're doing here. Let's just worry about that. So each command in the commands, so we go into server.js and commands here, we, we're going to add a commands thing. So commands and we're just going to actually import this so we don't have to type commands commands like that we can just type commands to so const commands equals require i'm probably going to use object destructuring so if we go into command handler this is responsible for the commands okay so here we're exporting handle command call. Cool. So we want to export commands here. So model.exports commands equals commands, that's it. So now require um so we go back two folders, then we go into handlers and command handler. So as you can see, that is an export from commands, which is here. There we go. There's a slight issue here. That's been around for a while. So if we look in models, I just want to move that to data because models and data are the same, are very similar. If we go into commands.pug, for each command, let's indent this properly. So we're going to get test for each command. Let's see that being rendered all. Commands is a map, and to iterate from a map, we need to convert this to an array. So, and <clears throat> values, let's convert this to an array, so that returns an array or something, an iterable. We can also type array.from, and that might yield a similar result, a better result. Bing. So now we get three commands. Uh oh. Actually, we only have three commands, so that's fine. <laughs> so now we can just render the command name here. How do we do that? Object. Um, this is a template variable in a way. So command.name. Let's see what that does. So we get the names of the command. 
So if we go into command, if we go into AFK, for example, this was a request to make this. We only have name here, which is all we need, really. We can add description. You can do that and render it here. We're just going to have that for now. We can have usage. I've done it here. So usage summary. And we also have a search. I'm going to add search here because search is very convenient for the user. So what we do is, why do we want search first of all? Let's go back. Okay, so we want it above here. We want it here. So outside the row we type. We're just going to make a div here for now. I wonder if we can just type dot and that will work. No. <laughs> just an empty class. Okay, div. So now we're going to use an input, a HTML input. And attribute, this is a search input. Boom. So now we get something here. Very cool. Uh, that also we can call it we can use a bootstrap class which is form group input groups for adding things within like this the input which we could do in a way we don't need it so search input so if we go and type Form group. This one. It's just form group really. Dot form group. We can name this dot form group if we want. CSS selector. And then input form control. Bing. That's that's large. So if we remove form group, let's see what happens. Okay. Why is this so big? So we need to resize the form, basically. Also, another thing with styles is you can make inline styles, which is you press style, type style, and then instead of using a CSS file, we can just type search, and then max width, we're going to use max width. And that will be 300 pixels. Let's try that. Okay. Bad indentation. Now, if we put this in here, it should work. Oh. <laughs> there we go. So now it's a lot better. Cool. So we want to center this. What we can do is, what we can do here is actually make a column, call 3, call sm3, that's consistent with that, and call sm9. And then put this in it, put nothing in the free. And then add a row at the top. Let's get rid of this. So now that pushes it to this side, which we want. Alternatively, we could use deflex, display flex, display flex. So this is a technically rows are display flex. Go on to that in a minute. Let's actually show you what row is. If we go here, display is flex. It's just a fancy display. There's different types. There's none, which is hidden. When we typed body dot hide in the console, that set the display to none. And then there's display block, inline block. We won't get into that though. So display flex which is 
makes it flexible in a way. And then D, um, and then justify contents center. Now that justifies, it puts the content within this element in the center of the element, of the parent element. So basically the parent element's here, and it puts whatever is within in the center of it. Cool. And now we're just going to add a, an icon here or something. Search. We can add I. FAS. We can guess there's an icon. F, uh, FA. Search. Let's see if that works. Boom. Yep. Now we, now we want to have a button. So I want this centered in a button. So we're going to type button. And then we can have an inline thing here. Or we can have it on a new line, just the same thing. Okay, so want to add button styles, we'll refactor this in a minute. Search. This is another CSS selector, by the way. Plus. Okay, so what plus means is there's a search search here. So search element with element with ID search. And then next to it, plus means after it, here. It's sibling button. So search button. It selects this element right here. And then we have. And then we just border none. We can type dot btn. That will clear that up a bit. Dot btn info. So now that changes the color. Maybe you might like that color. But I'm going to resize this here. Don't need the border. So max height or height 64 pixels. Let's see. So that's much better. Let's add our first jQuery. Let's add our first JavaScript. We want it to turn blue or our color. That knows that indicates that we've clicked on it. So when we click here in mixins, the list group becomes active and or the list group item becomes active, sorry. And it turns blue. But we only want one of them. So I'm gonna make this into a different style. Style um link and another Refactor it, style sheet, href, we're going to add that to CSS commands.css. We're going to refactor this. So here in assets, we're going to add commands.css. Boom. Now, it does the same thing. So when we click on this, we just want it to, for now, we just want it to light up. So we create a file in here, assets, js, commands.js. Now we're going to import this. Script. We can do that, which is alt. You can press alt, arrow key on Windows to move the lines down like that. So JS commands.js here. Boom. So now if we type alert, this is JavaScript in the browser. JS in the browser. Make sure it's in there, which it isn't. Why not? <laughs> okay. Bad copy and paste. Okay, source, and we just type defer. So now JS in the browser, that runs very quickly. Cool. So in commands, we're just going to do the same thing we did with categories, but in commands here. So we, we're going to add a plus command. We're going to add a command mix in. Command. That's it. Mix in command, command, zip, paste that in. 
we want to set the the element that was clicked to be to have the class active and the rest to be non-active so when we click we want to remove the class active from all of them and add the active class or make sure it has it to the one to the element that was clicked we can give it something here that indicates that it was clicked there's no indication that it's a category so we add categories here call sm3 dot categories so now we can type dot categories dot on click and then we give it a callback which is now the docs are here so click so dot click is another one dot on so dot on event I haven't really used this these docs before but there we go so on click what do we want to do so so we're getting all the elements here in a jQuery object and then we're listening when they are clicked so there's only one element here which is this we want li so within that this is a css selector so we're using css selectors everywhere <laughs> so we want to access that which was clicked so this this is how we do it so what is this well we, we don't use this arrow function because when we use an arrow function the value of this is not desirable it's different I believe in this case it is the window object or global object correct me if I'm wrong but now it is the value of this li that was clicked so this dot this is a jQuery object add class this adds a class to the element active so now if we restart I don't think we had to do that but now when we click that they become active core um, I'm going to add something here which is li cursor pointer which basically what that does adds a pointer cursor when we hover over it so now they, they all become active oh no <laughs> how do we fix that simply what we do is above here we need to make every other class that isn't this element unactive in a way so we type so this gets all the elements within categories that are an li so we type remove class active so now bing so that removes every other element if we had this after then no class would become active so we want to make this before so now they become active that's very cool in the next video we'll add search and also we'll make sure that these commands sort when we want them to